Hey everyone, welcome to another MLM Dumpster Fire. Today we're back to talk about our boy Fraser Brooks. Whether you watch my channel regularly or no, you most likely have heard about Fraser. He's a multi-level marketing coach and I have covered him personally multiple times on my channel and he never ceases to entertain us. I think the last time I covered him, he had world's longest definition of network marketing ever. It went on for like 10 minutes or so. So yeah, I'm gonna link that video at the end of this one if I don't forget. If you want to check that one out, that was funny. I have not watched today's video, so I don't know what's expecting us and bland reacting as per usual on my channel. So yeah, before we get into it, don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. That's a nice free way to support my channel if you would like. And as always, big shout out to all my channel members. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here and let's just get into it. Hey, if you ever wondered how to become a millionaire and the seven simple steps that allowed me to make that happen, well, in this video, I'm going to share with you exactly how. And I'm super excited because these seven steps... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I forgot. But yeah, he's going to teach us how to become millionaires like himself. He's a millionaire, apparently. ...are not difficult to implement, but you have to make sure that you do each and every single one. I would love... If towards the end of this video, you could let me know which step you're going to take action on right now in order to get moving with this process. So before I get started, I just want to share with you now I've made millions and millions of dollars using social media, millions of dollars online. I've actually made a million dollars in many different things by selling books, public speaking, coaching. There's lots of different things that I've been able to do that with. And I'm very... I have questions. Did you make millions of dollars from each of those things that you said or or did you earn millions of dollars from all the things combined? Are you actually a millionaire? I'm really curious. I'm going to Google it now. Proud of that. However, there's a few things that I need to share with you just before. When I was growing up, I was super shy, super introverted, low self-esteem, low confidence, no clue, no idea, no plan, no nothing. And my mum and dad were successful. They were being entrepreneurs for many, many years. And I I'd kind of seen them win, but I was never given anything. His mom and dad were successful full in network marketing. I don't know if his mom was successful in network marketing and I don't know how high his dad was in network marketing, but he did tell in one of the videos that I uh, covered in the past from Fraser a while ago now, he did tell the story about his father who saw an MLM ad in the newspapers and ended up joining multi level marketing and then he kind of was pushing network marketing onto Fraser from his very young age. So when he says his parents were successful entrepreneurs, he means they were in an MLM, which doesn't equal entrepreneurs, in my opinion. But just a heads up, because he's not going to explain it. He's just going to throw it out there. But they weren't uh, entrepreneurs. So as far as I know, they were only in network marketing. Thing apart from the mentorship from them. Right? They never gave me money to get started. Oh, here's $100,000. Go invest it. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. Oh, here's a house. Enjoy. Like, I, I didn't have any of that. But it was so bad that I used to hang around my brother's friends, who's, who's two and a half years younger than me, because I felt more comfortable because I was embarrassed around the people who were the same age as me because I had nothing that they had. They were driving nicer cars or they were wearing nicer clothes or they knew how to speak to girls a lot more. And I was just super shy and super introverted anyway. Here's what I want to share with you. Only seven years ago, I'd made a lot of money, but I, I had made a business decision that took me out of the industry that I loved to then become a coach, speaker, and trainer. And I was making a lot of money on, on kind of autopilot residually, but I wanted more. And I remember turning around to my now wife, Svetlana. She was my, she was my girlfriend at the time. We were living in uh, Germany in a basement apartment, a studio basement apartment when she was going through her master's. And I turned around to her and said, you know what? I've got savings. I've done well. If I could just make $3,000 a month, I'd be super happy. I just work the minimum amount of time and I just get 3,000 a month and we'll be all right. And I think- What? Work a minimum amount of time for three grand a month? Jeez, your expectations are very realistic, Razor, aren't they? That was me telling myself, I'm gonna set a goal that does not stretch me so that I can be lazy, right? That was the reality. But about a week after that, I turned around to Svetlana and said, Screw that. That is the worst mindset to have, setting a goal that you know you can accomplish. You gotta set a goal that scares you. So I took action on these seven steps that I wanna share with you. So, step number one. Wait, he set a goal like that to work minimum amount of hours and earn 3K a month and that was a, 
achievable for him. <laughs> Am I just small minded right now? But that does not sound very easily achievable to me for the majority of people out there. This is an interesting one. What do you actually want the money for? Because I'll tell you this, when you have that million dollar net worth, when you check your bank balance, it says a million dollars. Or when you add up all the things that you own and it's a million dollars. I don't know why, but I was expecting some brass band to come in to announce, congratulations, you are now a millionaire. Here is an award. Here is a pin that you can wear with pride that everyone's going to know you're a millionaire. I don't know why I thought that was what it's going to be like. And nothing changed. Nothing happened. There was no like epiphany. I wasn't like, I know I'm a millionaire didn't. That passed within about three seconds. So you have to really understand that money only solves money problems. And when there are no problems left, what do you need the money for? Do you want it for status? Do you want it for lifestyle? Do you want it for freedom? Do you want it for choice? Do you want to be able to give it away? Do you want to be able to support family? Do you want to be able to retire your partner? What do you actually want the money for? And once you've answered that question, I want you to answer this question after. Why? and try and do it seven times. So if you want the freedom, why do you want the freedom? And if it's because you want to travel the world. I Googled Fraser Brooks net worth and I found on companycheck.co.uk, Fraser Brooks LTD, which has now been dissolved, dissolved. Apparently he has had two companies and both of them closed or dissolved. And none of those companies, from what I can see in financials, they were not worth millions um not even close not even a hundred thousand pounds okay what else do we have fraser i mean business for home says that he's worth 1.6 million he makes it sound like he has multiple millions of profit he's getting good money from his books and shit i'm not saying that he's not rich i think he's being a little bit deceitful about his status and how much money he is bringing in. But let me know down below if you believe that Fraser Brooks is a millionaire or not. To be fair, I only did a quick Google search as I go, so. Why do you want to travel the world? Whatever it is, answer the question why as many times to find the root reason, the real reason why you want to become a millionaire. All right, so point number two is you've got to establish a mindset and environment that supports your idea. So the two biggest things that the two- This is very similar to MLM trainings as well, isn't it? Like how to become a millionaire, step one, you need to figure out your why is basically what he just said. All right, great, thanks. Amazing advice. The two biggest enemies that we have when we're on this journey to become a millionaire is our mindset and our environment. And usually our environment ruins our mindset. Here's a, like a kind of an example. You might be watching these positive YouTube videos, listening to amazing podcasts. You could be reading all the amazing, incredible books that are out there. And then you go to a pub or you go for a meal or you go somewhere with a friend and they laugh at your idea of becoming a millionaire. You being a millionaire? Nah. But I read this. But you read a book on it. Okay, good luck. So they laugh at it and whatever's around you affects your mindset. If you really want to have your breakthrough, because I get asked this question a lot. Like, if you're talking to random people in a pub, you probably shouldn't care about what they're saying. Like if they're mocking you, like why would you even tell random people in a pub? that you want to be a millionaire. Second, if you're saying that to your friends and your friends are being like that, and your friends are either joking in, in a mean way or they're not great friends. So, okay, I guess, yeah, that can affect your confidence, but it's still, I don't know how many steps this video has on how to become a millionaire, but the first two steps are not looking promising for us to become millionaires like Frasier. Like, hey, when, when was your breakthrough? How did that happen? What did that look like? When you break free, from your current environment, that is usually soon after when you have your breakthrough. Now, if you have a group of five friends and you find that one of them supports you, spend a lot of time with that one and then go find three, four, five new friends. Now, you're not getting rid of these friends. You're still going to spend time with them, just not as much time as you used to. Because in order for things to change, you've got to change. For you to get better, your situation, your environment has to get better. So go and find networking opportunities. Get involved in a network marketing opportunity just to get around the right people. Find a mentor. 
right? Start listening to Jim. If you join an MLM, your friends are probably not going to support you because first they probably know it's a pyramid scheme or they know that it's scammy looking business model where the majority of people never make any profit. They're not going to support you because they don't want to see you hurting yourself. They don't want to see you financially hurting. They don't want to see you working for free for this MLM. This is a video on how to become a millionaire and he's telling you to go into an MLM where 99% of people never make make any profit makes this for a very shitty tutorial Frazier in my opinion by the way all the FTC and a few income disclosure statements are gonna be linked in the description box below because they're gonna show you that what I'm saying is true it's facts the majority of people never make any profit in an MLM so if you want to be a millionaire you're definitely not gonna get there by joining an MLM Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and all all the legends all the greats but understand that as soon as you brainwash yourself and you go and speak in the language that you now speak to your previous environment, they're gonna laugh at Well, it's fitting that he said you have to brainwash yourself when you go into an MLM and just be in this echo chamber. I mean, that's kind of true of what happens to most people that join. So that's ironic, isn't it? That's interesting that he said that straight up like that. You, They're gonna say things like, you've changed. And instead, here's a big test. If someone says to you and says, you've changed, and your reaction is negative, because you're like, oh, no, 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 I've changed. Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to change. Then you're not going to become a millionaire. Simple as that. But as soon as someone says, you've changed, when you react excited and happy and positive, and you go, thank you so much for noticing. Then you're on the right path to success. So brainwash yourself and fix your environment to support the idea that you have, to support the growth that you're about to go on. All right, point number three is find proof and evidence that it can work. So if you're, for example, you wanna get involved in an online business and you wanna teach people- Are you serious? Find proof and evidence that this business that you're venturing into can work. And he's talking about MLMs as part of this. There's literally so much proof out there that the majority of people are not profiting in MLMs. You're not gonna become a millionaire by joining an MLM. You have less than 1% of chances of ever making a profit, let alone being a millionaire in an MLM. He's purposely being deceitful, in my opinion. Or something that you're passionate about, you're excited about, you've got experience about, go and find someone else who's done the same thing, or go and find someone else who's done the thing that you want to do, but in a different niche. Because if there's no proof and evidence... You going and finding a person who is top 1% in an MLM, and taking them as an example, and doing whatever he's gonna say that you need to do. Yeah, you can look up to them, but that person may have joined early on, which is the best time to join an MLM is when it's only at its early stages, when it's launching. You can become successful if you're one of the first reps that join an MLM, a new MLM, or you can have a big social media following that you then recruit into the MLM. So you just finding a person, a random person that's successful in an MLM doesn't mean that you looking up or doing what they're doing or whatever, duplicating their steps, whatever, being mentored toward by them that doesn't mean that you're going to be successful because their circumstances and their situation was different when they were joining than yours you're too late and you're never going to be successful especially when you're starting out then if you're going from zero to being a category creator and innovator it might be a little bit too much for you. Now, I'm not trying to dampen your entrepreneurship, but you're watching this video because you want to become a millionaire. So already you're trying to find out how other people have done it. And that's probably the route that you need to take. So maybe you have a, a neighbor who's made a million dollars, right? It might not be so fortunate for that to be the situation. You might have a family member. You might have a friend of a friend of a friend. You might go to a networking event and meet someone. You might attend a webinar or a seminar and you go, this guy's made a million or become a millionaire. What do I need to do to get noticed? What events do I need to go to to be noticed? Like you've got to find the who has got what you want and stop focusing on how you get what you want. You turn the how to the who and you will win. Whatever the who does, you do. 
Stop trying to figure out how to... No way. I literally just said, there is no way. That doesn't mean anything because they had different circumstances. They're already there. They joined in a different time. They have certain privileges that you might not have. This is such bad advice. Honestly, I feel sad for anyone who is listening to Frasier and thinks that his advice is legitimate or that his advice is useful to them in any way. Because in my opinion, it's bull crap. How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? How do I do that? Figure out the who, find the who, invest what you have, make the money, invest it all to find the person who's got what you want and you will win as a result. And point number four is who has got what you want. So kind of following on from the last point is you've got to have the proof, you've got to have the evidence that it actually works. So if it's worked for someone else, it can work for you too. If someone else has made a million dollars selling pens, it can work for you. And, and it doesn't have to be the exact same thing. Someone could be selling pens. You don't have to sell the exact same pen. You can sell something else that has a similar value and a similar thing than a pen does. But then point number four is who has the success that you have? You have to find the person who you can learn from. Here is a big problem in the today's world, and it happened a lot, especially with COVID, is so many people are learning too many different things from too many different people. Now, I love podcasts. I love video podcasts as well. I've got a walking mat underneath me. It's one of my kind of secrets to success as well, where I walk and I learn at the same time, do two things at once. And a lot of the times that I'm watching are the podcasts. Here is the problem though. There are a lot of podcasts, and this is not throwing shade on these podcasts because they're awesome, but you have to train yourself to learn one thing at a time from one person at a time. When you have a hundred different mentors, there's gonna be conflict. And as soon as you get conflicted in the beginning part of your journey and even the middle part of your journey, you start doubting. And when you doubt, you don't do. In fact, the more you doubt, the less you do. The less you do, the more you doubt. In fact, the more you think, the more you doubt. The more you doubt, the less you do. The less you do, the more you think, right? You start overthinking because this mentor said to do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But this mentor said to do this. For example, you wouldn't go to the gym with three personal trainers. So here's my problem with the podcast. They will have guests on about health and wellness. Then they'll have a guest on about money. Then they'll have a guest on about mindset. Then they'll have a guest on relationships. And you learn so many different things. But you don't need to. The goal should be, I need positive environment and I need to learn the skills from the person who has what I have. I need to learn from them. What do I need to do? Otherwise, here's what happens. You take one step forward with your left foot and three steps with your right foot. And then you're all out of sync and you're not going to walk straight. You're going to get confused, lost, dizzy, overwhelmed, frustrated. It's not good. So learn from the person who has the results and learn what they teach you to do. One, two mentors, absolutely amazing. The moment you learn loads of different things from loads of different people, it's going to damage your ability to be able to become that millionaire that you dream of. All right, point number five. This, this is harder than it sounds. You've got to sacrifice the good to get the great. So when I was living in this basement apartment in 2017, everything was great. Like Financially, I was doing great. But again, I had this goal, this really lazy goal. I want to make $3,000 a month. Now, for some of you, $3,000 is the dream right now. Push it add a zero or double it and double it again. I remember sitting there on a sofa. It was only a small, right? No, setting unrealistic goals for yourself is not gonna help you at all. It was very, very small height-wise. It was very small. I think maybe it was 35, maybe 30 square meters, something like this. We shared a bathroom as well. It was wild. The bed was tucked in the corner. There was a little sofa that was sat on and I was making, I like, like drawing out numbers and, and business plans and stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, and there was a TV on the side, I'm getting rid of that TV because I'm itching to turn the TV on and procrastinate. And what I learned was if it's not sales and it's not marketing, it's procrastination. So I got a TV, threw it out. For me, the good life was go out with my friends, go to the restaurant, watch the TV, watch some sport, whatever it might be. And I just said to myself, for the next two years, I am just gonna say no to everything, everything that does not move me closer to this. If you keep doing that, if you keep saying no to everyone and everything, you stop watching TV, you stop doing every single little thing that you enjoy and just work, 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 you're gonna burn yourself out. The key to success is not burning yourself out. But also when you look at the fact that he's talking about MLMs as well, you're gonna say no to everyone and everything. You're gonna stop doing everything that gives you joy in life for two years to work on an MLM biz where 99% of people never make any profit. It's not you. It's not how much work or effort you put in. The business model is set up so that the majority of people are going to fail. So it doesn't even matter. Even if you do that for two years, just work, work, work. 
the MLM. That doesn't mean that you're gonna be successful at it at all. So this advice is, it's dangerous at this point for people's mental health and like their well-being. It's literally telling people to stop doing everything and just work all the time. Ridiculous goal. And it worked. But you know what? People stopped calling me asking me to do things. It was lonely. But there is a great saying, it's lonely at the top. And I want you to think about the hierarchy. Think about how many people are actually millionaires. The percentage of millionaires, it's tiny. If it's worldwide, it's super tiny. If it's the US, it's still tiny, right? As a percentage. But think about it. If you are the top 1%, it's very, very lonely at the top. There's no one to look up to. There's nowhere to go when you've reached the top. So you have to appreciate that when you make decisions, you have to commit to them, then execute. That does not bring me further towards the goal. So I'm saying no. Because when you say no to one thing, you can say yes to everything else. But when you say yes to going for that dinner that's not going to move you closer to the goal, you have to say no to building that business and becoming a millionaire. All right, number six, stash the cash to then reinvest in yourself. The best investment you will ever make is in yourself. The return on investment that you make in yourself is incredible. Buying a book for $20 can make you millions of dollars. Buying a course from a mentor can make you millions of dollars. Attending an event can change your life because of the vision that you have or the belief that you can do it. Maybe you find the right mindset or you get into the right environment or maybe you find the proof of the evidence. Potentially you find the who that you need to learn from for the rest of the life. Maybe you realize I've got to sacrifice that thing that I thought was all I needed to sacrifice, but I actually need to sacrifice everything around it too. But you've got to stash the cash. You don't upgrade your lifestyle yet. You upgrade your lifestyle after you've reached the goal. And point number seven, my favorite, is you've got to fall in love with the process and serving other people. There's this great thing called the gap. And the gap is simple. Everyone has one in every single aspect of their life. It's where you are now, and where you wanna and where you wanna go or where you wanna be, right? And this is the gap. Okay? You have to fall in love with the gap. You have to fall in love with the idea of constant growth, constant learning, constant innovation, constant action taking. Because right now, your net worth, again, we talk about becoming a millionaire, your net worth, $10,000, for example. It's a lot for a lot of people and it's not for a lot of people. It's all perspective. A $10,000, but you want to be a millionaire. So you have to fall in love with the journey of making the extra $990,000 in net worth. That's the journey you've got to fall on. I'm falling in love with this. I love the learning that I've got to do. I love the people I'm learning from. I love the people who are around me. I love the action that I'm taking. You have to fall in love with that. As soon as you become frustrated with it, you will most likely start overthinking, over doubting and not doing. But as Jim Rohn famously said, you've got to turn your frustration into fascination. When you get frustrated because it's not moving as fast as you want, get fascinated by how other people have done it faster than you. Don't compare because comparison kills confidence. Instead, you need to get obsessed with the gap. And a lot of the times, the more you serve, the more you earn. The more impact you have, the more income you'll get. The more people you help, the more profit you will make. So those are my seven steps to become a millionaire. A lot of it is mindset and some action steps, especially around getting into the right environment, saying no to the things that you should not be doing. So make a list on all these things and start taking action. If you got value from this video, do me a massive favor. Let me know in the comments down below. Smash the thumbs up. All right, Fraser, we've heard enough. This must be the worst advice on how to become a millionaire that I've ever heard. Not that I watch a lot of these kind of videos, but like he said it himself, the majority of his his advice was just like mindset bullshit. The steps to become a millionaire are not mostly regarding to your mindset. This is so unhelpful, especially with the fact that he literally said you have to go into an MLM and surround yourself with our other MLMers. When I think that Fraser's training cannot get more ridiculous, it, it does. Somehow it always does. But let me know down below what you thought about this. Should we follow his advice to become millionaires or not? Thank you for watching, especially if you made it this far. You're a trooper and don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. That's a nice way to support my channel if you would like and as always big shout out to all my channel members thank you guys for being here and i will see you all in the next one bye